each of the organizations have their own university, which I think is telling. And they'll tell us part of the story um, of what they've been uh, challenged with, what opportunities have presented themselves, and how they're addressing them. Uh, we give, uh, we've given each about eight to 10 minutes. So again, it's gonna be a style of lightning talks. Um, and let us begin. Uh, with the very first, with Martha, if you could join us, please, uh, from Comcast. Thank you. Great, thank you so much. And Carl and Ed Cass, thank you for inviting the Comcast team here over the last day and a half. This has been a really great experience for us. As most of you know, uh, Comcast is a telecommunications and media company. And within our organization, uh, we have about 500 learning and development professionals and we serve about 100,000 employees with learning and development. And so one of our 2020 uh, strategies is perfect for me learning. And what that means is that we provide learning to our employees in a way that meets their needs, what it is that they need, when they need it, and on any device. And so with me today, I have two of the very best on our team who are creating innovative solutions, and they're gonna share with you. First, I have Larry Clark. He's our VP of the College for Talent Professional Development, as well as our College for Technologist. And then we have Eric Hoffman, and he is our VP of Operations, and manages all of our L&D technology. So with that, I'm gonna ask Larry to come up. And uh, as a corporate learning function, um, our focus is on learning is really for performance. So how does how does learning affect human performance, which then affects business performance? And the corporate learning function grew up in the industrial age. So um, it it grew up at a time when learning was or not learning, but uh, work was performed and, and tool and the tools for sharing information looked like this, and work got done in places like this. So um, it's no wonder that we were, we've been totally cool for so long with uh, a learning environment that looks a lot like this as a primary way of delivering learning. But technology has changed all of that for us. It's changed the work, it's changed the workplace, and very importantly, it's changed the workforce. So now they're getting their information through tools that look like this, and they're getting their work done in places like this. Right? And so the question that we have to ask ourselves is, what's the next approach? Or what's the next series of approaches? And as we've heard, um, as June was saying just before, there's no shortage of possibilities anymore because the technology is so ubiquitous, it's everywhere, and it's so cheap to get access to. How do we think about the learning part of it? What people learn and how they learn? So we took a step back and we said, what is, um, has our mission really changed? So much has changed, has our mission changed? And while we can shape the words of it, the purpose of what we do really hasn't changed an awful lot. But the context that we have to do it in, and the expectations of our learners um, and our business really have gone up. So for our learners, as Martha said, they want it when they want it. From anywhere, anytime, in the context they prefer, at their own, on, on their own, with others, when they want to do that in a pace that works for them. It's, in a sense, what they're doing is they're bringing their consumer experience into the workplace. And they're saying, if I need to learn how to change the oil on my lawnmower or tie a bow tie, I just get on the internet. So now I, I'm at work and there's really much more critical things for me to do than tie a bow tie or change the oil on my lawnmower. How come I can't get access to the information that I need? And then the business is changing the way it's looking at it, they don't want us to just educate people or train them. They want to foster innovation. They want to promote self-direction and a different mindset in the workers in our organization. And also to hang on to our talented people because there's, a, there's this war for talent that we're dealing with very much. And then breaking down barriers that may exist to creating great customer experiences. So it's a culture piece for us as well. So what we're going to talk about um, quickly are four innovations that, as we're thinking of it, bringing the consumer experience into, um, into our organization and the way that people learn and get the information to be effective in their jobs. The first, and Eric's going to take us through the first three, Learning Nucleus, um, our video portal, and our My Learning mobile platform, and then I'll be walking through the last one, Learning Journeys, which is our version of VMware. And I'll turn over there. Thank you, Larry.
If we look at what we're calling the, our uh, learning nucleus concept, I love what I saw up on the wall, up on the hill last night, uh, the expression uh, paraphrasing, because it's one we use in all the scoping that we do whenever we put a learning solution together, and that is, what are we solving for? What is the problem that, exi that, that exists, and how can learning uh, help fix that problem, if it can fix it at all? So, so that's really our, our uh, bottom line is, can we contribute to the solution through uh, the use of education or the, the use of learning? And a problem that we faced was in a typical call center where you might have 250 employees, you may have a few of them leave relatively constantly, but we would need to wait until 12 of them left before we could start or run a class. So service levels would go, down, would go up for the people remaining, and we'd have to wait and start recruiting people. And sometimes someone would have to wait around for two months before they actually ended up in a class to start learning. And we found out that the people that could wait for two months before coming into class generally weren't the most highly motivated people that we could attract. We call them sort of like C players. How do we get A players into our environments and keep service levels constant and so forth? So, we decided to blow up the classroom model altogether. We formed what we're calling the learning nucleus. It's a center in the middle of the call center, but we try to put it right in the middle of the call center. And we invite people, as soon as someone comes off the floor, attrits or is promoted from the, from the, uh, the line, we hire someone immediately, and we invite them into the learning nucleus. In that environment, they have roughly six weeks to complete a prescribed curriculum that is all based on an iPad and a computer and a learning advocate, not a trainer anymore, not someone standing in front of the class, but a learning advocate who's there to support them during their learning journey. It's self-paced, it's self-directed, it's their responsibility to get through the curriculum to prepare them to do the job. There are gates so we don't leave them hanging. They, they need to hit levels and demonstrate their competency before they can move up. But our aim is to try to get them through that curriculum as fast as possible and get them onto the floor to start working. Now, if they had come from a company where they worked in a call center in our industry, they might through, move through that curriculum in two weeks. If they are a non-digital native, it might take them eight weeks. But it's up to us to decide, do we want that employee? Do we want to engage them? And can they prove themselves in the learning? And so it's a, it's a very unique concept really, really exciting to watch. We've uh, launched a proof of concept that showed very promising results. We're going to uh, our uh, pilots now. We're going to do three pilots across the, the country. And we really think it's going to change the quality of our, our, our entrance, the speed in which we prepare them, and just the efficiency of the entire process. The video portal. Um, a little bit more traditional, at least uh, in my mind, it looks just like te uh, the TED Talks portal, but it's based on a uh, proprietary platform that Comcast has developed and over-the-top service that we decided we would use for ourselves before we allowed our customers to use it. Um, it's a friendly partnership we have with our Innovation Labs group. Uh, the technology, the back end, was tested in, in uh, the real world. We streamed the Olympics through this, uh, with this product. Uh, on people's devices. Now it's set up as a channel store for our curriculum for Comcast in a very organized fashion, completely mobile ready, and it's putting video into the hands of all of our learners on demand. Really neat stuff. And finally, probably the biggest challenge at least my group has faced uh, over the last year was getting truly, quote, mobile in, in the learning experience. Uh, as Martha mentioned, we wanted a uh, uh, perfect for me, learning on demand kind of a, a, of a way of thinking. And we immediately said, well, let's just replicate our learning management system on an app. So we put a team together, we started working through that, and we quickly, quickly realized that the technology uh, was probably the easier part. Everything else was, was, was the tricky part. Uh, a typical web-based training that you take on your computer does not translate necessarily nicely to an iPhone. And uh, we had to engage a lot of interpretation, a lot of vendors to, uh, to help us repurpose content that needed to be on the mobile device and really teach our own people how to design to the platform 
so that the user experience was a great one. Uh, we've gotten through those hurdles though, and we have a, a beautiful little app. We, we had to grow it ourselves because even our LMS vendors uh, weren't to the point where they could deliver what we needed from, from the app. So we uh, went way to the tip of the spear, got out there, built it ourselves, and it is working really well. We're, we're uh, uh, quite pleased with it. Those are three of our uh, innovations, and Larry's going to talk the M word for you because he's got the C before the M. Thanks. Thank you, Eric. So um, we introduced books as uh, a way to scale originally to say we can, it's hard to get the reach through classroom. And this is an example of these two screenshots are an example from a MOOC that we have called Exploring Leadership. And this is for individual contributors um, who want to look at people management positions and learn what it's like to lead people if they've never led people before. You can see the first, the, the shot on the, on the bottom there is um, projects that these folks have done and uh, presentations they put together and they collaborated on across the country. Um, the back page that you can see here is a chat session that's going on about one of the, uh, one of the projects they're working on. So we went after it to enable scalability. We got huge cost savings, but what we didn't expect was we got a much more immersive learning experience because of the spacing of learning instead of a two-day class, so it's a six-week class with two to three hours each week, and then assignments that they would be doing and collaboration as teams, they got a ton more out of it and we had no instructor in the entire process. We had coaches who would go in and answer threads and things like that. There was no live sessions at all associated with it. And what we've also learned is that the MOOC platform itself is showing a lot of promise to stitch together ongoing cohort programs and other things that are truly blended. So as we see, um, going back to, I think, a, a statement that June had made about um, we've got to think more about the learning and less about the technology. We're seeing the technology can enable a much deeper learning experience when we stitch together a whole bunch of different modalities and use it, use the platform as the connective tissue for it. Works very, very well. And we also learned that great instructional design and learner support are absolutely fundamental to making something work. Otherwise, you're just putting content up there and people are clicking through it. So lastly, just a couple of key learnings. First one is culture is harder to change than technology. Technology is very hard, especially when you're trying to stitch a bunch of technologies together that were not built to work together. But the culture is, is harder. When you think in a corporation, you think that user-generated content is discoverable in court if there's a lawsuit. So people get uncomfortable with that. Or letting hourly employees learn on mobile apps that are out, outside of their normal work hours. These are all cultural things that we have to deal with. Another is that changing the way people learn changes how they think and work. As our, um, our evidence from the learning nucleus was, because we were training new hires in a very collaborative but also very self-directed way, when they got on the call center floor, they acted completely differently from the other folks who had been taken through a more traditional classroom experience. They were more collaborative, they were more self-directed, go figure, right? So it can create culture by the way people learn. Um, also, as I made the point, tech-based learning can be more immersive and more natural, quote unquote, um, than a classroom experience for folks. And lastly, a key learning, think holistically about the learner experience. As you know, we, we got into a whole bunch of experiments and we realized the experiments have to connect with each other. Um, otherwise, it's just a bunch of stuff and learners get confused. So we're working through the issues of what is the ecosystem and what's the learner experience and what's the platform how people will experience the content that they've got. And that's it. Thank you.